from the Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Thursday, September 19th. Okay, so we have the moon in Aries all day. Definitely going to put a pep back in our step. Definitely going to have some ants in our pants. We want to start fresh. We want to take action. We want to make moves. We want to jump into a new chapter. However, we're not really being supported in doing so. We do have to kind of cultivate a new spark, new fire, new flame in our inner realm. We do have to tap into some creativity, into a new passion, into a new desire to actually stand the test of times. When we do get supported in taking action, and making moves, we're going to run into some roadblocks. We're going to run into some growing pains. It's very important right now, especially with this new version of self taking over power and control over our day to day lives, over our thoughts, over our emotions. It is very important that we spend the time to build the relationship with thyself. And so the moon in Aries energy definitely going to have us all revved up in all the right kinds of ways, but we are going to have to find a physical outlet to channel this particular restless energy appropriately because we're not going to be able to take action and make moves the way that we were hoping we could. That being said, there are eight different aspects popping off here today. Seven of them are going to involve the moon. The moon in Aries energy going to semi-square Uranus, the great awakener who is retrograde in Taurus energy. Here's the thing. Uranus retrograde in Taurus energy is trying to illuminate for us in our physical realm where it is that we're holding on to the old, where it is that maybe, you know, the old version of self had built particular topics and themes where routines, relationships, money matters are concerned that we once wanted, that we no longer want, we no longer resonate with. We've been praying for change. We've been praying for a pivot point, but yet we're not open enough to actually make said change. Again, there's a lot of fears, doubts, and insecurities of letting go of the things that we've already built, we've already brought to life, we've already created. We have to trust that the universe will provide something better in the place of the things that we're currently looking to remove. But many of us are waiting for those new things to arrive before we do the hard things and actually let go of the past. And of course, the universe doesn't work like that. So the moon interacting with Uranus probably going to bring up some confusion, bring up some agitation, some frustration, because again, we want to take action. We want to make moves. We want to jump in to a new topic and theme, a new chapter of our lives. But this is a completion cycle, which means we're not doing a whole lot new, more so than we are taking action and making moves to wrap up the old, to deconstruct the physical structures in our physical realm that again are blocking our path, are blocking our way. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with Saturn, the Lord of Karma, who is retrograde in Pisces energy. And of course, he rules systems and structures, roles, responsibilities, willpower and discipline. Because this is a positive interaction, we're definitely getting a little bit more focused on where we're again building, cultivating this inner fire, the spark, this flame. We have new passions, new creative ideas, new desires that we want to actually pursue. But of course, with Saturn retrograde and Pisces energy, the whole point of that is to realize where it is that the old belief system has got to go. Sometimes we realize that the things that we want require us to be a different version of self. And because Saturn is trying to wrap up the delusional, uh, disenchanted, um, deconstructed view of who it is that we've been, there is this element where we're starting to realize where it is that we want to go from here, but where it is that we need a new structure a new foundation to build within ourselves, building ourselves up instead of tearing ourselves down, actually believing that we can achieve and obtain certain things where realistically there's a part of our unconscious selves that don't think that we can. Again, the moon in this Aries energy, giving the passion, the boldness, the bravery, the warrior type of spirit to kind of hack through the fears, the doubts, the insecurities, the most vulnerable parts of the old version of self so that again, we can clear away the old to have the space to start building towards something new. The moon is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves, who happens to be in his rulership in Virgo energy. So our heart space, Aries energy, we have head space, Virgo energy, that is fire and earth. What happens when you set fire to earth? Well, we burn shit down. What do we have to burn down? We have to burn down our inner narrative. We have to burn down the ways of doing things, the old ways of doing things. We have to burn down our inner 
let's call it judgment on ourselves, our inner criticism that we are casting upon ourselves. Now, Mercury in this Virgo energy, we've been focused on the problem in order to fix it, heal it, repair it. But Mercury in Virgo energy also brings up mental health issues. And right now, emotionally speaking, we have this tenacity to overcome any of those mental health issues, to flip the script into a more supportive, encouraging type of inner dialogue, inner narrative. Basically, emotionally speaking, we want to move on. We want to move forward. Mentally, we're still fixated on the problems. We emotionally want to overcome these particular challenges. Mercury and Virgo energy so focused on the problem that we can't even see the forest past the trees. When it comes to communication, we are likely having an issue articulating ourselves confidently and clearly. We are having a little bit of a restriction. Again, we are highly judgmental, highly critical, especially of oneself, let alone, you know, other people. Our conversations, our communications could be very harsh, be very rigid, very to the point, direct, blunt, but in a hurtful kind of way. We're not actually saying how it is that we feel. We're not actually saying what it is that we actually mean. There's a little bit of a jab there, a little bit of a pettiness there. We definitely have to resist that at all costs. Now, the one thing that we got going on today that doesn't involve the moon is the sun in Virgo energy trining beautiful interaction with Uranus, the great awakener, who of course is retrograde and Taurus energy. This gives us earth on earth. That's what gives us the trine. We're dealing with like-minded elements. So the sun shining a bright light in this Virgo energy, of course, is showing us where it is that we can improve, where it is that we can do better, where it is that there is a little bit of growth and evolvement available to us at this particular point in time, where in our physical realms, we have to build better routines, really kind of align with better habits, if you will. The Uranus energy has us popping off with downloads. Okay, so first of all, the sun and Uranus coming together is trying to show us in our physical realm where it is that there's a path out where it is that yeah, we may feel blocked in certain instances, but where it is that there's a path of freedom in other chapters, in other parts of our lives. So instead of getting focused on all the problems, instead of getting focused on the areas that we feel limited and restricted and blocked and challenged, let's pivot and take a good look at the other areas of our life that are free flowing, that are supporting us, that are giving us an option to move on and move forward. This is when we gain insight. This is when we gain inspiration. This is where we have an aha moment and epiphany that we can't unsee. This is like an unexpected aha moment that changes the game, changes our perspective, changes our mood, changes our attitude, and really kind of shows us where it is that we have to think outside of the box, where we definitely have to step outside of the box of focusing in on the problems, and at least give ourselves an opportunity to identify what is good, what is stable, what is working. The moon in Aries energy going to sextile, beautiful interaction with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance and blessings, who's in this Gemini energy. So we have fire and air. That is where creative solutions come from. That is where there is a new passion, a new idea that gets formulated. Emotionally speaking, Aries energy, again, has ants in our pants, has a pep in our step, has this new spark, this new fire, this new flame. Jupiter, of course, wants us to grow, wants us to evolve, wants to integrate the wisdom that we've learned through the tough love life lessons into the present moment so that we can create new options and opportunities for us to advance, for us to move on for ourselves. So this is a sextile. This is a beautiful interaction. So we're going to gain a lot of momentum. We're going to gain a lot of creative outlooks. We're going to gain a lot of big ideas. We're going to gain a lot of optimism, a lot of confidence within ourselves. We are starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel, and that definitely feels very good. Now, the moon in Aries is going to come up to bump into team up with Chiron, the wounded healer who is retrograde in this Aries energy. So a conjunction is just as much of an ending as it is a beginning. We are, again, feeling a lot of the weight be lifted off of our shoulders, off of our heart space. We are feeling less and less like the old version of self. We're leaning more and more into the new version of self, the healed version of self, the growing and evolving version of self. 
So emotionally speaking, we are definitely starting to see ourselves from a different set of eyes. We are starting to, again, motivate ourselves to kind of get our shit together, get in gear, do what we can, do what we have power and control over, especially to gain some momentum, to really put ourselves in a situation to see some improvements, especially with the overall identity that we are now getting more and more comfortable in. The moon is going to make a positive interaction with Mercury. Mercury. So they get back on the same page. Now, granted, they're not on the same line. They're just on the same page. Okay. Emotionally, we are fired up. We are bold, brave, and courageous. We want to take action. We want to jump into new chapters. Mercury, mental plane. Well, we're starting to think of ways to actually do that. So instead of getting stuck on the problems, stuck on the limitations, stuck on the restrictions as we were earlier in the day, we do kind of give ourselves a little bit of a leeway. We pivot out of focusing all that is wrong and focusing on a plan, on a strategy to actually be able to take a step, even if it is a baby step forward in a new path, in a new direction. Now, communication definitely going to flow a lot easier towards the end of the day compared to the beginning of the day, which means that we may be able to actually articulate the new ideas that we're having, the new goals, the new visions, and the new dreams that we actually want to pursue, that we actually want to achieve. There is a lot of aha moments stemming from, again, the sun trining Uranus earlier in the day, we have a different attitude. We have a different perspective. We have different ideas. We have a different approach to seeing the good in our lives instead of being focused on the bad. But the last thing that we have going on here today, the moon in Aries energy going to directly oppose, sit across from Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money, who happens to be in her rulership in labor and energy. Aries energy is me. What do I want? What do I need? What do I desire? The Libra energy is... Well, what do we want? What do they want? What do we slash they desire? Basically, the Aries energy is putting our own wants and needs, desires first, building in the relationship with thyself in order to heal thyself. The Libra energy, we tend to put our own wants, needs and desires on the back burner. We put more time and energy into making other people happy than we do putting our own energy and effort into making ourselves happy. Now, Venus and her rulership she wants everybody to be happy. She's in love with love. She wants everything to be fair. She wants, you know, just everything to be rainbows and butterflies. But emotionally speaking, we know that that can't happen. We know that when we do what we need to do for ourselves, that other people are going to be sad or disappointed or let down. We know that if we do what other people want us to do, we're letting ourselves down. We're disappointing ourselves. And so the whole point of an opposition is to bring those particular extremes into a balance point. Now, Venus and Libra energy, she's focused on her happiness, her joy, her safety, her security, her stability. She wants to bring the chaos into balance. She wants to bring you know, the, to the forefront, who and what needs to stay needs to go. And so emotionally speaking, we're going to feel a little bit, I'm going to say more aggressive to do what we need to do for ourselves. First and foremost, there is going to be a little bit of a guilt trip that we put ourselves on, or in some instances, we'll get from other people when we declare what it is that we want to be doing for ourselves. And we see how that particular energy shift um, kind of takes away from the people that have been gaining a lot from us, putting our own wants, needs and desires on the back burner to make them happy to put themselves at the top of the list. And so we do have to strike a balance. This is going to be a major heart activation. Again, listen to the Ascension forecast for this particular week so that you understand where these energies are actually manifesting. But at the end of the day, we do have to figure out where it is the scales are out of whack in order for us to bring them back into balance. We are still very much in Virgo season, which means that we have to identify the problem in order to fix it, heal it, and repair it.